What's up guys, Subs Eric here, back for a, another VOD review. Today, a K3 Soju VOD review, because look at his performance over his past stream so far. 3.2 AVP, couple of bot fours up like right above my head. Like if, if you look right from where my head is, we got an 8-7 there. But I mean, honestly, outside of that, some, some incredible performances from Soju. He is locked in, you know, Soju is the type of player who... Sometimes he's like giga playing for fun and he is just making some some very troll decisions and then sometimes he's locked in like this and doing well and this was a game I watched a, a little bit of it while I was working because I have a real job sadly um, and I had it on my other monitor and it, it was a really fun game so I want to VOD review this game and, and talk about a way to play this patch that I think not a lot of people are really looking towards. Uh, also before I get into the video super far I do want to say sub war signups close tonight at midnight eastern time. Um, I don't know if you, if you get your entry in like midnight Pacific, maybe we'll give it to you. Cause like, uh, I mean, get, get your, get your entries in by midnight. Um, but yeah, sub wars on Sunday. So get your entries. Um, you, you know, your, I guess it's not really an entry. I don't know. What, what would you call that? But, uh, go fill out the form down below. If you're sub to my Twitch channel or sub to my Twitch channel and then fill out the form below so you can play on sub wars. We got great prizing. It's going to be really fun. Go do it. Uh, all right. First augment here, Pandora's component item grab bag. Um, Pandora's and component are, are both really, really solid. We have this gargoyle here, here. Like I could certainly see this being like a Jinx reroll spot from this spot, right? You just take component buffet, you slam the gargoyle, and then you play like Jinx reroll from here and you just hard force it. Uh, you know, seems quite reasonable to me. I think that's maybe what Soju's even scouting around for a, a little bit here. Um, but I will say, uh, well, well, let's just, let's just let it go through. Okay. Item grab bag tends to not be an early good pick. Stim pack. Once again, I, I talked about this already. It's an okay early pick. The statistics say, yeah, the statistics actually probably like this a lot, of, about the same as component buffet here, both like decent early augments. Um, but Soju doesn't take either of those augments. Um, he decides to take beggars can be choosers. Now, I think statistically, this is one of the worst augments in the game, 4.84. Yeah, is there a, a worse silver augment? Uh, let me go pull it up. Uh, at 2-1. Young, Wild, and Freeze apparently slightly worse at 2-1, and that is it. So it's the second worst silver augment in the game. Now, Soju has a reason why he wants to take this augment. Um, I will say, if you're trying to win a game of TFT, his reason is probably not very good to, uh, to take this augment. Also, uh, there's so much to, to analyze here. So, Soju opts to not take Minor Polymorph here. He could take Minor Polymorph here, right? He has all of these 2-star 1 costs, and so we could fish for a 2-star 2 cost here, and it could be really, really big. The problem is that Seraphine and Lilia have really, really high synergy here. Like, he actually has a pretty good early board with this here. So, I'm pretty sure Minor Polymorph is actually still not correct. Um, maybe there was a world here where, like, he could not have made a unit two-star, but then, like, at that point, like, yeah, like, I don't know, there, you couldn't have, like, not made these units and then taken this, so... It's just a difficult circumstance, um, but he does end up actually end of combat saying F it and taking minor polymorph here, and he ends up polymorphing Seraphine into Nunu here, which is... It's not very good, I would say, uh, because now we've lost our main DPS and now we're stuck like item holding DPS wise like like this. Yeah, exactly. Where we're going to play a Zoe plus an Ari here, which is some amount of damage, but not a ton. So I think these first couple of plays from, from Soju probably objectively are mistakes. I mean, maybe you can say like the, the using the Polymorph to fish, there are obviously like a few good units that you can certainly hit here, but like there, there's a lot of bad stuff that you can hit. Um, Nunu is actually like pretty decent because we can throw the gargoyle on him and hey if we had if we had turned say the um the other unit the the jacks into nunu maybe it would have been fine uh this is an interesting call from soju as well he wants to make gold in the situation here so he's just gonna play shapeshifter plus bastion on this board it's a pretty low damage board right now um but hey i mean shivana is like kind of a damage dealer jace is like kind of a damage dealer yeah he trusts and like nunu is a little bit of a damage dealer as well so he trusts that this board can do enough damage and yeah it certainly looks like it can um but yeah on, on the augment selection, Beggars Can Be Choosers, not a great augment. Now, Soju decided to take this augment because he just played a game where he got a golden quest, and this is gold subscription galaxy. Um, so it's very, very easy uh, to, you know, cash out that golden quest on gold subscription galaxy. Uh, the problem is, of course, ooh, okay, we get that jinx with a rod right at the end there. Uh, the problem is, of course, that, like, you can't guarantee that you're even gonna have gold augment as your next augment slot. Um, so in general, probably not the best idea to uh, 
to try to force a golden quest from a spot like this. Um, but still, we have a very, very upgraded board here. We can look at, yeah, making 40 gold here. We're very rich because it's gold subscription and we're on a win streak. And we got that extra gold um, from, I mean, kind of the fact that we recombobulated this unit, right? We used only three gold to make a Nunu two, so our board's actually like a little cheaper than it normally would be. We are fighting a pretty strong Warwick here though, uh, but our entire board being upgraded, I think uh, it's actually a really close fight here. Jace. And the Tristana with the, oh, we barely get through there. Good, uh, good on Soju to slam the rod actually on Tristana there. Might've actually saved him the fight, just having a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of extra damage here. But we do obviously have a lot of gold here and a good win streak. Also, Beggars Can Be Choosers obviously gave us that extra gold that we can use to uh, to also, you know, push levels and, and be strong. And hey, this augment statistically isn't amazing uh, because basically the, the effect is you know, the difference between having an extra few rerolls uh, is often not very high. Usually in your first few rerolls, you find an acceptable augment. So it's really just low roll protection. Or if you really want to fish for something specific, it is uh, it is good. You know, I think if we uh, if we lived in the world, do you guys remember uh, a few sets ago when there was the portal, which it was uh, it was all silver augments? I think beggars can be choosers probably would have been broken in that portal because you could have just force gotten a uh, recombobulator as your final augment. Um, but obviously we don't really live in that world. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, Zillion here, I mean, he's not a bad, just random unit on the board. We do kind of want Blaster, but yeah, I mean, a random Zillion's a random Zillion. We pick up a Varus here as well, which like actually kind of fits with the board that we have, but the problem is it doesn't fit with the items that we have at all. So yeah, Soju is going to opt to just play this, um, play the Zillion here, going to, to level up and get the Trist back in, but he wants to put the blue buff onto the Zillion. And yeah, he's just gonna item hold Zillion with the idea being probably that we're gonna play towards a Karma later. Uh, Karma, you know, last patch, not very popular. Now, after a lot of stuff has been nerfed, maybe a bit more popular here. Um, but still, I would say not like one of the, the favorite units of everybody. Moment of, uh... Moment of truth here, we get silver augment, so Soju is very upset here. So he just has to roll for a generically good silver augment, but you can see why Beggars is not that good of an option. We can just take Exiles here and be happy with it, right? It, it's a good enough augment in this circumstance. He's going to decide to roll here because I mean, I guess like, I, I think he's trying to look at stats and see what the best silver at 3-2 is, which I think statistically it's like find your center after they, uh, I believe they buffed it uh, this patch. So I don't know, I mean, it's probably not bad. We get Band of Thieves, he rolls over item collector. Um, and Band of Thieves is fine here. I think he um, he was thinking about old item collector and thought that it would be like giga broken, but I, new item collector is actually just like a, a medium uh, silver augment. But you can see obviously like if we had been able to get a golden quest here, our game would be set, right? We're 83 gold. We would have just cashed that out for free, but probably not worth taking a silver to try to guarantee a golden quest when you don't even know that your next augment's gonna be gold. If, uh, so you actually talked about like, if it was uh, ascending augments, um, then maybe, but then if it was ascending augments, then we wouldn't be in the galaxy that gives us extra gold, so kind of moot. But the the main uh, thing to talk about this game is that we are very rich, right? It's a it's a gold subscription game, so most of the lobby is going to be pretty rich here. Um, but Soju, because he win streaked early, because he took an econ augment to start, um, kind of an econ augment, gives you seven gold. Uh, he's, he's quite rich. He's 50 gold level seven here, which is very, very ahead of the curve on a normal game. Like level 730 next round is like pretty good. So he's like, he's about 30 gold up on where, you know, a quote unquote normal game would be. Uh, we also have the blue buff slammed. We'd look for like a Morello here, ideally for uh, the idea that we're playing towards Karma. And there is a four cost Morello here. So I think, yep, we're just going to yoink that. And yeah, the idea is we're going to play towards Karma this game. Karma Fiora is a pretty reasonable setup to uh, to play in this spot. Just, you know, we have the Fiora already and we have these Karma items all figured out. We also have a Zillion already who oftentimes you, uh, you pair with Karma uh, and we just have the remover to move items off. This is an interesting little clump that he's doing here. I'm not sure why. I mean, I, I guess he wants to get good value on his gargoyle here. And oh, and he's also trying to get good value onto like the uh, the Morellos, I guess is the idea um, on like Zillion Bomb AoE. I mean, pretty smart from Soju to, to optimize his uh, his positioning like this. I think, you know, he's a, he's a beast at these little optimizations. When he wants to be, sometimes he's just like reading Twitch chat. Uh, sadly, we lose to uh, an Ascension board though, this new uh, buffed Ascension charm where it, uh, it triggers a little bit earlier and it costs zero gold, which is cool because like uh, that augment was pretty bad before. I'm um, going to fit Vex onto the board here for Chrono. I mean, at this point, we're just playing this board until I level 8 slash level 9. Uh, the question is going to be how much we're going to roll on 8, because I think Soju, already in his mind, is thinking, I might not have to... I, I might be able to go fast 9 this game, which is not something that I think a lot of people 
are doing right now. Uh, I think a lot of people, you know, are really on the reroll angle. But I mean, Soju's board is good. His econ is good. We are in a a galaxy that that really wants us to a uh, portal. I don't know. There are probably people. I mean, to be fair, I never even played in the galaxy set, so I don't know. I'm gonna be like, there's some people who are probably gonna be like, I don't know what galaxies are. I mean, I don't know what galaxies are. What even? What what was a Big Bang galaxy? Anybody know? Did it give you? A duplicator or was that a, a different one there was one that gave you like a duplicator or like two duplicators or something was that big bang can any tft boomers in the comments can you uh, answer my question but yeah i mean look at our econ right we're very very rich here you know so just gonna roll a bit to stabilize this board but boom nami pair and rise pair he just opts to say, okay, I'm going to put this Nami onto the board. I find a Camille here as well. And yeah, we just need to get three Mage onto this board. And now we're we're basically stable at this point, right? Very smart from Soju actually to do this roll down, to stabilize his board a bit on 4-1, right? He can't just go straight to 9. If he goes straight to 9, he's going to die. But he very, very quickly, he plays flexibly. He hits a Nami too. And these items are completely fine on Nami. You know, Karma would have stabilized him decently. And now his idea is, yeah, we can just push 9 from this spot with the Nami too. So very smart from Soju here. With Cloak open, I mean, Magic Wand looks quite reasonable. It's a it's a spark um, and, you know, it's... <laughs> he, he thinks about just taking it, but he has all these free refreshes, man. Um, I mean, Item Collector is also a, a quite solid option uh, here. Oh, Support Golem might just be the best one. He opts to take Item Collector. Interesting. Gold Augment, last. I feel like it's probably Golem. Ah, no, no. The stats, uh, the stats like Item Collector even more than... Um, than, than golem okay well yeah i mean gold item collector looks very very good in the stats still um and especially this late into the game right where we actually have the items we're also up an item from our band of thieves augment so you know we already have four completed items so i think this makes sense also we're thinking about pushing levels item collectors can be really really valuable on you know all potentially nine units that we have later but yeah i mean i i feel like this is not a line that many people play this is just like very good flex tft from soju into fast nine and yeah we're gonna lose this fight and he's he's I don't know, destroying his, his hair. I mean, I, I can't do that. Um, but, uh, but you know, he, he he just put a bunch of two-star units on his board, fit three mage onto the board. He's got this sugar craft in with uh, with Soraka, uh, which also fits mage in, which is kind of cute. He's got the three preserver in with the um, with the Rakan. Like it all it all fits together decently well. And and then Chrono in with the uh, with the Zillion. And also these units are going to be very easy to play around later when we potentially get a Karma. The only downside is you know if he wanted to play some kind of Karma Nami setup, he will have to either just not itemize the Karma or remove her, uh, which he you know doesn't have right now. Another loss here down to 50 HP. So starting to look a little scary for Soju because we're fighting some of these stronger boards. But obviously we're sitting on 72 gold here. Uh, we can't really expect to win these fights. Obviously it would be nice to, but yeah, can't uh, can't guarantee it. We have Cloak open here. This is an interesting pickup from Soju. He picks up the Smolder with Sword. Um, I don't know that he really wants a BT. I don't actually know about this pickup here. I'm, I'm interested to see what Soju does with this sword and with this Schmolder here. Uh, we pick up the Tarik here, who looks like we are actually going to full pivot the board. Wow, now that we found the Karma. Yeah, he, he says, you know what? At this point, uh, Karma with these items is going to do more than a, a Nami on this board. Also, maybe he wants to make uh, BT. Yeah, so he wants to make BT eventually for like that Fiora or uh, we had that Camille earlier, uh, but I believe he sold the Camille. Um, but yeah, the idea is, you know, we, we want to have BT onto like Fiora or something later. I mean, it makes sense. We're not playing the Fiora right now, uh, and we do lose another fight down to 39 HP, uh, and we basically have one more fight that we need to sack, right? So we, we definitely don't want to level this round. It's going to cut way, way, way too much into our econ. We are going to get more gold from gold subscription at 5-1 as well, so certainly we're going to 5-1 it. Ain't no way we're going to 5-2 it unless somehow like we win this fight, and then maybe, but even then, probably not. Uh, we're also still holding on to a lot of good stuff here. We're holding on to this Milio, who can fit very nicely onto this board. This is actually kind of a bad person for us to fight, because it's going to be... We'd prefer someone with uh, more of like a weak frontline, so we can get a lot of kills here, but yeah, we only killed two units here which feels pretty bad down to 26 hp but the upside is we're very very rich here and we are going to make our pivot uh next round with uh basically infinite gold there the morgana and the um the karma here yeah i'm, I'm down to actually just slow this down a bit because this is already I, I love what soju's doing here is just selling the units that he knows he is not likely to pair to, to play and then getting in all the other stuff that he wants like the four preserver is good he actually even just levels to set to, to nine here and just starts to roll it a little bit here with the idea that you know we don't have that much time 
uh, next round. So we're actually gonna roll a little bit slowly here, pick up the Diana. He actually ends up selling the Camille pair here with the idea that maybe it's a little bit hard to play Camille. He's actually holding on to Gwen, who who does fit decently onto this board, right? You have the Sugarcraft and two Sugarcraft has been buffed. So I could see it. Um, I'm gonna get a ton of gold here. So we have a lot of gold to roll here. So let's see what Soju can do with this roll down. Temporary TG is pretty good. Karma 2 is pretty good. Gonna hold on to uh, the uh, Thomas Kench as well. There is a Fiora pair, which is nice. We also have Diana paired now at this point. There is the Camille, but he really yeah, is not interested in this Camille at all. Interesting. Nor is huge, and boom, that shop is huge as well. We can play the Diana. Just over the Nasus, yeah. Uh, we actually, this is a zero trait Diana, right? But she is gonna be our item carry here in this situation here. Looking for like Ionic Spark, I would think. Yeah, Ionic Spark for the Diana. You're kind of forced to make a Wormogs at that point. And then we have these uh, two TGs. One is real, one is fake. I don't think he actually knows which TG is real, which one is fake. It's hard to, to say. Um, and then he has to throw a Gargoyle last second onto the Rakan here. Um, okay. A nice pivot from Soju hitting that Diana to helped us out a lot. We still... Once again, I'm pretty sure this is a zero synergy Diana, right? It's just a Diana 2 on our board, but hey, just a Diana 2 is just a Diana 2. Uh, I think we would really, really like to get Bastion in at some point. I feel like this Fiora is doing very little here. I mean, the upside is that it's giving uh, Warrior to our Gwen 2. Uh, and yeah, he did end up, the, the real TG ended up going onto the Gwen here. Uh, he gets Salvager here, which... I'm not sure if it actually does much. You, you can break down some of the gloves and make them into other items, but I think it's fine to not take Salvager in this spot. And yeah, I mean, our, our board looks good, right? The Diana 2 was huge for us here. And the, the question is just figuring out what the rest of our board's gonna be. But nicely playing around the Karma with these items. Items are so important in a, in a game of TFT. If we didn't have these items for Karma, our board would be so much weaker. We pick up a, a Briar and a Champion Duplicator here so we can... Ooh, this is an interesting question though. How do we want to use this? I mean, I imagine we're gonna get out of the Gwen Fiora eventually and get into like Briar plus, yeah, this makes sense to me. Briar plus just a random even Hecarim for now. Yeah, sure. And the idea being that we can get into our Kana later. Play around the Briar with this TG makes a lot of sense. Though she does a little bit, get kind of one shot here. And our Karma is getting wrecked by the Kogma here. Can Diana pop off? Ooh, this is a really close fight. The Zillion Bomb gets us through though. Ah, the Zillion unit is so good, man. Um, but yeah, actually, I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, as far as other units to fit in, I mean, we're still playing the Morgana Witchcraft Spat. Is that anything? I don't know that I love it. Yeah, I'd rather Archangels, I think, right? For the last Karma item. Witchcraft Spat, I really don't think does that that much here because we're not going to be able to find the little Witchcrafts here. We do uh, pick up this guy as well, uh, which is going to allow us to potentially get Arcana in. But yeah, Ar Arcana has been nerfed a lot. Actually, I'm down to go back and look at actually what the the number was here for um for the, the uh, Arcana when he checks it. Yeah, it's uh, it's 2% true damage for every three charm spot. It's so low now. 4% bonus true damage is nothing here this early in the game. I mean, it's not even early. Uh, it's just so hard to play uh, to play Zerath these days. But I mean, something like a Tom Kench, I think, could potentially come in um, to just give us Arcana uh, and that we just have extra uh, HP onto our entire board, uh, maybe. But four Preserver is so much uh, extra healing. So, hey, maybe this is just going to continue to be the board and we just have two Bastion in with the Hecarim. Obviously, Bastion, a pretty good just generic trait to have on your board because it gives your entire board extra armor and MR. Um, think of it very similar to uh, like Ultrist of last set where it's giving your entire board stats, so it makes sense. And the Briar is also kind of on this board here. We have no shapeshifter for her, which hurts, but it's kind of like, who are we gonna fit shapeshifter wise? I mean, like you could think about um, playing um, like a Nico here and getting witchcraft plus shapeshifter in, uh, but witchcraft this late into the game is pretty like, you know, not not that valuable. And even uh, shapeshifter for Briar, I mean, it's some extra HP onto her, but like, what are we cutting for shapeshifter here? Especially when like Diana, I feel like is actually way more tanky than the Briar here. So it's it's an interesting kind of puzzle figuring out what this board is gonna be. Um, and ooh, okay, so do at this point, now that we're, we've bought nine charms here, he's gonna make the pivot into Arcana. This is pretty interesting. So the idea is like, now that we've gotten to nine charms, we're getting this 12% damage amp, which is pretty good. And that's obviously only gonna scale up as the game goes on. He decides to get out of completely vertical preservers here. Um, and and play more around uh, this board. So yeah, no longer the four preservers here. Um, and yeah, he could even think, I don't know, I, I do really kind of like having Shapeshifter onto this board here. I, I think sticking with this makes sense. He also opted to get out of the Melio, the idea being that we already have items on basically all the relevant units. Um, so, you know, at this point, what is Melio really doing? Giving our Rakan an extra item? It's not too, too big uh, in a spot like this. I like this pivot from Soju. And, you know, once we get three more rounds, right? If we can survive three rounds, which our board looks pretty good though. Oof, that was a scary fight. If we can get through three more rounds, we're, we're going to have another huge spike in the amount of extra damage that we're getting from Arcana. So 
Uh, ooh, okay, Yordle Spirit here is really big. You, I mean, you have to take this, right? We need a charm every round. It was scary to, to even skip that. Ooh, he's gonna feed the Briar here. I mean, I, I think this makes sense. Briar is so, so strong on our board right now. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I, I think it does make sense here. So this is our board. We're fighting Kog'Maw reroll, which surely we can outcap, right? Okay, and that was that was really big because uh, we, we just need one more charm here and then we're getting, oof. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, like you have to take that last charm here. Uh, also, I believe the charms were a bit bugged out because of how Xerath works. Ooh, this is a cute little uh, synergy to get in as well. We get three Frost in here with the Swain here over the Nasus. Cause yeah, we're, we're playing these other Frost units. I mean, it makes sense. Okay, but now, yeah, now we're up to 12 charms bought, which is, you know, another big jump in damage jam. And hopefully that means we are out of the woods. Looking pretty good here. We beat this player. And so it's just the Kog'Maw player left. Um, I mean, there's another TG. Yeah, you can just TG, I guess. I mean, it, we have Morgana 2 here, right? You just TG Morgana 2 and it looks really, really nice. Yep, TG Morgana 2, fantastic here. And this will probably be the last fight, but like, I don't know, what a, what a cool board. I feel like, oh, we got some gold here. I mean, that's not very good, but hey, hopefully, uh, hopefully our board is good enough already. Definitely can uh, can light snack the, um, the Briar because it, it doesn't matter. Like this is the last fight. Um, and uh, and yeah, hopefully our board can outcap this. But I don't know. I, I really like how Soju played his mid game. I think so many people are doing this, this kind of like fast nine play style, but it can work if you're in a galaxy like this where you have this extra um, econ, if you you know have a, a very solid early game. And so, you know, I was pleased to see Soju play a, a really cool uh, play style, this, uh, this type of fast nine and, and very rewarded also making some weird decisions like his first dog went but hey i mean that's that's why you watch him right he does some uh crazy stuff uh hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please like comment and subscribe once again uh links down below to sign up for sub wars it's the final day to sign up uh also go sign up for a medify group all right i'll see you guys uh later bye